Hello everyone and welcome back to making an XB70 Valkyrie in Blender 2.8. This is meant to be a relatively simple tutorial in the basic functions of Blender so we're not doing all the things that you could possibly do. We're just trying to make a simple plane and the Valkyrie is not the most complicated plane that you could envision trying to model in here. Uh, so far we've done a reasonable job. There are a lot of details that we need to add. The antennae, the um, vertical stabilizer, the horizontal, uh, the canard. And um, we need to do the cockpit windows and stuff like that. I'm not going to be doing the landing gear. We'll rely on uh, Kerbal Space Program for that because I'm bringing this into Kerbal Space Program. And also I'm not doing uh, these control surfaces in the back here. Uh, for the same reason, because we're going to use procedural ones in Kerbal Space Program. The first thing I want to do in this video is actually animate these outer wing portions, which was the main attraction of doing this particular plane. And it'll be very instructive for people to learn how to animate things. Well, the basic way of animating things. There's a lot more to animating things. There's all sorts of skeletons and doing all sorts of business that I don't even fully understand. I just want to do a simple animation uh, get done very quickly hopefully and so well the first thing we need to do is make sure that our outer wing portions are separated right now, now they're together if I try to rotate this that one's gonna rotate in a weird way and the pivot point here is not that great either but first let's uh, focus on separating them and if you recall we need to go into edit mode uh, well, first of all, we need to actually apply this mirror, otherwise that other part is not uh, accessible. And then go into edit mode, make sure we're selecting everything. So A, and then we are going to press P, and then separate by loose parts. And now there are two outer wing parts. Back into object mode, I'm going to call this one outer wing Oops, double click to uh, rename outer wing right, and then this one outer wing left. Okay, and now the good thing about them is they are already convex, and so we don't need to create another uh, collider for them. Otherwise, we need to create a new mesh and uh, call it collider and make the outer wing the parent of it and have it animate along with the outer wing so that well, otherwise the, the collider will not go along with the animation. So we certainly have to do that before starting to work on the animation. We need to make sure that the collider is there. But this is going to be its own collider and I think that will work out just fine. It's not very many uh, polygons. It's not a very complicated thing. And you, you know, for other parts, uh, you can sort of oversimplify the collider. But I think for a wing surface in an aerodynamic program like um, like Kerbal Space Program or X Plane 11 or something like that, uh, better not to skimp on the wings. So we'll try our best to do the wings properly. And so, yep, this in this case, it's easy. Now what we could parent to it instead of the collider just so that you can get a sense of parenting is these hinge portions, right? We've got all these little guys. Now they also need to be separated, right? They've got a mirror. So let's apply the mirror and we're going to get a whole lot more uh, hinge portions. Okay, I believe we have a whole bunch of loose hinges now and the count seems right. Okay, we are going to pair them up with the appropriate outer wing surface. So this outer wing left and I, I'm guessing that this one, this one, this one and this one rotate. That would make most sense to me. So first we're actually going to select the children, the things that we want to have as children. So this one sh holding down shift, click this, click this, click this. I swear the screencast keys was working earlier. Hold on. Um, let's see if it's gonna, yeah, it actually shows what I'm clicking over there. All right. Uh, this, 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 and then click the part that you want to be the parent, which is that, and then control P. And I'm gonna set parents, keep transformation. And now, if uh, we rotate the outer wing, those will rotate with it. However, they're not uh, joined to it. They're not the same mesh. So if we go into edit mode, they'll still be editable separately. That's important. 
because we don't want them to be the same mesh, otherwise um, turning the outer wing into a collider is not going to work very well. And uh, the same for... And so uh, having done that for those hinge parts, let's make this wing part the parent for the... And oh, we need to separate that off too. I think we're basically done forming the wing. So I don't mind... Uh, applying the mirror and splitting it up. Hopefully that's not going to be a problem. Anything else uh, right now? Basically we're committing the wing. Mm. For now it looks like basically how I want it and we can consider further details later. Um, yeah, we'll just keep it simple for now. Okay, so apply and then tab, select P by loose parts. Is it just one part? Let's uncheck merge. Okay. Okay, now I get another wing. It was merging the two wing portions together because they were so close. Okay, so now we've got two separate ones. Um, back into object mode, this one becomes... Oop, wing left. And this one wing right. Okay. So on wing left, we want to get uh, some of the hinge portions that aren't rotating with the outer wing bot part and then parent it to that so they remain steady with it. Oh, and uh, this front part too. Uh, but we'll have to break the two sides of that off. So first things first, control P. Okay, and so we're sort of cleaning up all these hinge bits. Okay. And so now the wing left and wing right have three each, and the outer wings have four. Okay, so now I, I would like to rotate this in a better location. If we try to rotate this right now, it rotate from here. That's not good, right? That's not where we want to look, uh, rotate it from. Um, basically what I want to do is rotate from here and we need to keep it steady in um, certain axes. So I'm going to actually add a sort of reference empty and empty plane axes right here. You can see we've got a sort of reference thing. Now it's not really at the center of the hinge so I, I want to shift it over a little bit. Right at the center of the hinge like that and probably vertically as well. Okay, and then we are going to take the outer wing left and actually parent it to that particular empty. So it's empty two and we should rename that um, uh, rotation left. Okay, so outer wing to rotation left, control P. Okay, now, now I, you could also shift the center of this if you wanted to um, object set origin, you could set it to the 3D cursor. So we've clicked the 3D cursor right here and you could set the origin to there. But this way with the plane axes, just again, go into add uh, empty and then plane axes, and there's probably other ways of accessing that, I think we'll end up with a cleaner result. And now you can see if we uh, if we manipulate this, this axis or whatever, and these are a little bit disjointed, aren't they? Hmm, okay, so that's because of the location of my little plane axes. So let me unparent it. Let me get the outer wing again. See, if this, if these aren't exactly in the right place, then when you rotate it, the other stuff will shift. So what I want is this. I want to object set origin to center of mass surface. Okay. And I want this location to be where the plane axes are. I'm just gonna copy and paste.
Again, there's probably an easier way of doing this that I'm not thinking of, but I just want to get my axes to exactly the center of this hinge. And that will do just fine. So now, when I take the outer wing and select rotation left and make rotation left the parent of the wing, and now not rotate that, but rotate this. Now there's no weird gap forming in the hinge. Now you can't really see the hinge bits rotating because they're so similar. But they are. Otherwise they wouldn't have been messed up on the previous try. Now we want to get that back to zero. And basically I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to say object set origin to center of mass. This part, I'm just going to get its info into my new empty. Once again, we can check whether it's working all right. No, I don't want the hinge. I actually want the axes. There we go. No problems. Okay, so we have our method for rotating the outer surfaces. We just need to create the animation for that. And that's always down here, basically. There is a whole animation thing here. Okay, so things have changed in this animation editor compared to when I last used it. And I think what I want is the keying here active keying set rotation. Rotation is what we want to do. If you wanted to animate both uh, location and rotation, it's like this. Watch out for scaling. That's a little bit complicated, especially in a program like Kerbal Space Program. But you can select all these possibilities, but rotation is all we want. And we want it for the two parts that we've got here. And we should be able to add a keyframe Insert keyframe. Oh, okay, there we go. Now we've got insert key. All right, so keying here, uh, this here, insert keyframe, and now it's showing the keyframe, the rotation on rotation left and rotation right. That's what we want. Okay, then over here, let's say it takes two seconds for these things to rotate down. And we want, we want to adjust the rotation got all these views that I don't need. Um, but anyway, we'll keep that for now. We're rotating around the y-axis. And I don't know the exact angle that the outer edges of the XB70 rotate by. OK, well, for now, I'm going to go with 45 degrees. I, I think it can go more. Now. Being able to go in steps is fine. Uh, there are ways of doing that in configurations in Kerbal Space Program. So if we want to do some intermediate angle, that's doable. That's not a problem. I see an image where it's more sharply turned. I think maybe it should take a little bit more than two seconds. Basically, 30 frames is one second so okay uh, that's fine for that one and then we also want to rotate the one on the right and is this gonna be negative 65 yes it is so if one is 65 the other one's negative 65 gonna select both of them and we're going to go to keying and add another keyframe okay so we've added a keyframe at zero another one at 90 and we press play and that's it that's our animation now we need to truncate our animation to the actual length of this maybe a little bit of buffer uh, go to 100 frames but we don't want otherwise you won't be able to uh, re-toggle or adjust the animation again until the whole animation is over so a little bit of a steady state after the end of the animation is fine, but not a whole lot. And yep, we can just 
Make sure every interim point is fine, and it seems to be. And that's it for animation. So, pretty simple. Now, for Gribble Space Program, it really doesn't like you to have more than one animation per part. So, keep that in mind. And another thing, if a part, uh, this outer portion is currently animated, you can't really attach anything to it. If you try to attach something to it, it'll, that thing will just stay where it is assuming this state. It won't go along with the animation. So you, could, you can attach things to it, it just won't go along with the animation. So that's a Kerbal Space Program quirk, not necessarily true in all programs. There are a few different editor types for animation. Right now we are in Timeline. So there it is, uh, Shift F12, the shortcut for that. Um, there's a dope sheet, which is similar, but not quite. As you can see, it doesn't give the breakdown per part. It does these transformations. I haven't really used it much, so I don't know about that one. Timeline is the one I'm most familiar with. And then there's Graph Editor, which could be useful in some contexts. Um, it gives you the sort of slope of how the action is being performed. So you can see it starts out slow and then goes at uh, average pace and then slows down near the end. So it creates a smooth animation automatically for you, which is nice. Um, and you can scale it with that, dragging the end of this. And we can see one going negative 90, the other going positive 90 because that's what's happening to the two sides. And yeah, if you want to tweak this, uh, I suppose you could, but I haven't messed with it to be honest. Uh, for simple things, it's doing all right. So I just stick to the timeline. Anyway, so since we've sort of been doing animation, I want to complete the story, if you will, even though we haven't finished the model yet and we have a lot to do here. I guess I'll just make this an animation a tutorial episode and we need to learn how to import this into Unity properly. So this is a side note from the normal Blender stuff. You need to be able to export it correctly. Now if we take a look at what we have here in our uh, in our timeline, the only things that we don't need to export are the two image files. Everything else here is stuff we want. Okay, and so I'll just leave it like that and export. And for animations, we use FBX to make it work in Unity. I, I don't know about the details of Collada, but I've just used FBX normally. And so of course, I'm going to take out the version there. But important things. First, uh, well, we don't need to import empties. That would have gotten rid of the, well, well, we do need some empties. Anyway, we'll, we'll get that. We don't need the camera, we don't need the lamp. Armatures, mesh, other, fine. Um, uh, we are not selecting selected objects because I just turned the ones I didn't want off. Um, but if you wanted to just pick certain things to package into this model, you could. But what I want to focus on is animation. Now, it used to be in Blender 2.79, and previous, there are two types of FBX. There was an ASCII and a binary. Now there's only the binary. And uh, that is not how I used to export things. I used to just use the ASCII one. But uh, baked animation, yes. A key all bones, um, probably all right. Uh, what, what we want to deselect here is this one export each action as a separated FBX animation stack. And you need to get rid of that one because otherwise you're going to have two animations. One for, well, basically, uh, one for the right side and one for the left side. They'll be separate animations. So we want those to be animated together. So we don't want it to separate those. Uh, add a keyframe at the start and the end of actions for the animated channels. We don't really need to do that. We've got the keyframes we want. Um, export each non-muted NLA strip as a separated. I don't want to separate anything. I want one animation on this and that's it. So I'm just going to get rid of that. The rest of this should be fine. We'll see. Uh, so I'm going to export this FBX. Let me make sure there's nothing else. Apply modifiers. Very important. Just do that. And uh, yeah, I think that handles all the things. If you really want to reorient it, that could work here. 
and rescale. It used to be that the ASCII needed to be rescaled by a factor of 100, but usually that was done in Unity. So export FBX and didn't really inform me whether I exported, but we'll see in Unity. Okay, here we are in Unity, a new scene called XB70. If you don't know how to import uh, KSP part tools, I briefly went over that in a previous Blender video on the Xenon tank and how to bring it into KSP. But uh, yeah, basically you're going to need to make sure that you import package, custom package, KSP part tools, and then you'll have a KSP part tools thing here and you need to apply that to the game object once we have a game object. So um, we're just going to drag our FBX file into our assets block and there it is XB70. Now orientation wise for aircraft it's an uh, interesting thing translating that into Kerbal Space Program. I'll tell you how it's supposed to be oriented but first things first um, we'll check the scale. The scale should be fine in this case exporting as FBX does now. Animation type has to be legacy for Kerbal Space Program and click apply. You have to do this on the prefab so make sure to do that. Import animation and then name the animation. In this case I'm gonna call it mm, wing tilt. I'm just gonna call it wing tilt and not scene. Press enter and now you see wing tilt. Now if you accidentally had more than one animation you'll see more than one here and that would not be a good thing. So you need to make sure that it is just one. You can play to see that the wings actually go down. Of course, we don't have a texture on this yet. We haven't done the texturing. So it's just applying the texture that I last used on a model, which is not the right texture, but that's fine for now. Okay, so we've got a nice uh, animation there. It seems to work. We click apply. Okay, so we have it in here and we want to uncheck play automatically. Definitely don't want to play the animation automatically. It'll be toggled by a module in the configuration file. So we're just gonna, obviously that's how most animations are triggered in Kerbal Space Program. So yeah, we're not playing automatically. And game object has the parts tool thing and we would type in XB70 and put that into a separate folder. Show material shows only one material, that's important and that is correct. It is currently the wrong material. Okay, but otherwise we have everything looking right. And while we're here, we might as well check whether the outer wing uh, serves properly as a good collider. So let's see, add component physics mesh collider convex. And we see a green shape appear, a green outline, and that looks to be roughly the shape of the outer wing and so that's fine that's what we want and we'll do the same for the outer wing here you can do both at once by the way okay so that will work all right so i think i'll just keep this as a straight up animation video as a general uh, tutorial on how to make a simple animation for kerbal space program in blender and uh, we'll leave it here. Next time I'll take care of the details, the canopy, and the texturing. So look forward to that and I will see you in the next video.